Welcome to another episode of our Telecom Innovators video series. My name is Phil Harvey. I'm an editor here at Light Reading. And there's no debate that the global communications industry is facing a really uh, unique convergence of technologies and also opportunities. Um, as we're adding 5G, cloud, uh, edge computing, SDN, NFE, IoT, AI and machine learning, all these things are making it possible for mobile networks to do things that they've never done before. They're certainly a lot more flexible, a lot more powerful, and they're creating a new foundation for a really interesting future uh, of new business and consumer services. So that part we're really excited about. Um, but as ever in the world of communications, we're not starting from a clean slate, at least most operators aren't. Um, Everything we do has to fit in with a lot of the stuff that came before it and managing those technologies and those um, and orchestrating those services while continuing to move the network forward is a constant challenge for uh, telecom, cable, and other uh, network operators. So we've got a really interesting topic here. And joining me today to cover some of this is Yogan Patel from Amdocs. And we're going to talk about today's network environment some of the new challenges in orchestrating and managing services, and what end-to-end -end service orchestration is, what it does, and we'll also get into some of the success stories of service providers that have been trying this approach. Um, Yogan, welcome to the show. I appreciate you making the time today. Thanks, Phil. Happy to be here. Um, happy to have you. And of course, Amdocs is an expert in, um, I, I get in trouble for saying this, but all things back office, meaning, you know, sort of the, um, ma making the networks really work, uh, behind the scenes. Um, I guess a good place for us to start is to talk about, uh, the change, what's changed in this generation of networks. So let's say if we're going from the 4G LTE network from five years ago, um, what's changed from that network to today and how are those changes influencing the direction of, service automation and orchestration. Okay, so, so when you look at the uh, current generation of mobile networks, you know, these were essentially single domain fixed networks, you know, one could call them service ready networks, where um, the performance steps for activating users are fairly simplistic, you, you know, you basically turn a subscriber on, uh, and you gave them some entitlements and some capabilities. Uh, occasionally, you have some simple workflow steps, maybe uh, drop shipping a device or installing a device. Uh, the the service parameters were typically set up at the time of fulfilling uh, and provisioning the service, and there's not a lot of subsequent uh, customer configurable options to modify the basic service parameters after the fact. And the last piece of the sort of the traditional networks is when you look at the ecosystem of partners you know, who are embedding, integrating, you know, bundling communications technology as part of the end user or end service, it was fairly limited. Most of the third party mm -hmm. applications were pretty much over the top oriented. So you sort of had this fairly simple service ready network, which is a previous generation of mobile. But when you look forward as to what's going on and you sort of touched on some of the technologies that are driving that, the, the network and services environment will be quite different. You know, there'll be many more services that are going to be supported by a mix of different functions and domains, you know, physical network functions, virtual network functions, cloud native network functions. Now, these resources are going to sit across a distributed network, some at the core, some at the edge, some in data centers on the cloud. And they're going to require stitching together uh, you know, the service capabilities through sophisticated orchestration. Now, there'll be new varieties of composite services that'll be based on traditional, you know, single domain atomic services. And then finally, uh, a big change in this new networks that we're going towards is many more on-demand configurable options. Uh, and, and also the, the approach to assurance is going to be much more proactive intelligent. So in a nutshell, we're moving from sort of a prior generation of fairly static, small number of services networks to a new generation of highly dynamic, flexible, configurable networks. And so that's gonna require a change in the way service providers think about uh, fulfillment and orchestration and automation. 
Oh, that's a, uh, oh, thanks for that answer. That's a good, good summary of, of what's going on. And of course, like I was saying earlier in the telco space, um, you give a little, you get a little. <laughs> so with all that flexibility that's coming uh, to, to bear in the, in the new telecom network or new communications network, I should say, um, what are the kind of challenges and complexities that are suddenly introduced in these new networks? And then how should service providers be responding to these? So, so I touched on some of that all, earlier already, but sort of the, the big top level challenge is, you know, how do you automate the end-to-end service lifecycle for these new services that are crossing multiple domains and being composed from a different mix of capabilities across this disaggregated and distributed network? So the end-to-end service lifecycle automation is challenge number one. Uh, when you think about those composite services that I mentioned before, they'll be stitched together from existing, you know, atomic services, you know, how do you orchestrate the disaggregated systems that support each of these individual standalone pieces? Many of these systems don't talk or interact with each other today. And then finally, you know, the, the third major challenge is how do you get a single view of the data and the processes and how do you unify the management fulfillment and orchestration of policies and actions for these new services that are, again, spanning a much more dynamic, flexible, programmable network? So those are kind of the top three level challenges that service providers will face. Um, and, and sort of in terms of the solutions, there's sort of a new class of uh, orchestration solutions that's being dubbed and coined as end-to-end -end service orchestration that'll support the life cycle management across these uh, hybrid and dynamic networks. And what these end-to-end -end service orchestration solutions will do is they'll integrate with existing investments that service providers have in domain-specific orchestration. So they'll stitch and tie these things together, but they'll also fill in the gaps in orchestration fulfillment uh, for new technologies and new network domains. So end-to-end so -end service orchestration is not a rip and replace of existing domain-specific automation systems, but they're intended to tie together and augment these systems that exist today through more intelligent and flexible layer of automation uh, and the idea is to be able to have this capability set that allows these disaggregated systems to work as a whole because these new services are going to span this dynamic network where you do have domain-specific automation, but now you need to make right. it all hang together to support these end-to-end -end services. Yeah, and when we're talking about end-to-end -end service orchestration, um, you, you know, it's a, it's a probably music to the network operators ears that that it that, that that the solution you know takes into account all of these things that came before um what are some of the specific capabilities of uh of these uh new solutions um what, what kinds of things are they are they uh doing and 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 monitoring inside of the the network that that allows this to happen so, so the capability set, you can think of it as falling into three buckets, right? So group number one is uh, the ability to model these new services in a, in a way that allows chaining the services across multiple domains. So a flexible, rich service modeling environment is kind of step number one and capability number one. And the service modeling has, has to also account for the topology in terms of capacity awareness and domain level resource planning and placement. So capability number one is flexible service modeling where you can have all the decomposition maps and all the connections made between all the you know, piece parts that make up the overall end-to-end -end service. Uh, capability number two is flexible workflows that can actually uh, interact with domain specific workflows and orchestration systems. And they have to have the monitoring and control loops that allow interacting and controlling the downstream domain specific orchestrators. So flex, flexible workflow is, is kind of the second piece of capability. And then the third piece of capability that's required is to be able to drive you know, data driven policies and actions, having an aggregated view of all the key metrics and KPIs, being able to analyze those and then take actions based on what's going on. Because in many cases, you're gonna have data showing up from different domain-specific automation systems, but they need to be interpreted and correlated uh, and acted on as a whole in order to make intelligent decisions around either proactive assurance or remediation of issues as and when they occur. 
So those would be kind of the three capability sets required, flexible service design, uh, flexible workflow, and then holistic unified, you know, data management and policy and action management. Okay. And I'm um, uh, someone who's covered this industry for a while. I'm, I'm, I'm relieved that you're making this, uh, th these deeply technical <laughs> specifics, um, plain enough for, for normal people to hear and understand. So, uh, uh, so well done on that because this is, this isn't really complex stuff, you know, sort of behind the scenes. Um, but now let's take it up even a, a slightly higher level so we can talk, um, a little bit about, what this enables. So um, what are some examples of services or offerings that communication service providers would be um, using end-to-end -end, uh, orchestration to, to provide? Yeah. So some of the services we're starting to hear about and we're actually seeing showing up in RFPs and RFIs, and in some cases, there are some early examples out there. So one is bandwidth on demand. You know, so how do you give organizations and end users the ability to control and right size the network in real time. And maybe even just not only uh, all the time, but also for specific windows uh, on a given day or uh, at a given time period. So bandwidth on demand that's configurable, you know, by day, by time, you know, by, by period. Uh, another one is bandwidth auto scaling, where for example, you could monitor the consumption of the network and then based again on certain triggers being met, the network automatically responds and delivers the, the bandwidth required in order to meet the intent of, of that user and the connection requirements that the user has. Uh, another example is priority services, where you, you don't treat all users equally, right? On today's mobile network, it's like a, it, it's one size fits all, but you might yeah. have services where you want to be able to prioritize uh, access or service levels for a particular class of users based on certain parameters. Uh, another example could be taking corrective measures and restoration of services in an automated way because you see certain things happening on the network. Those are sort of examples for traditional broadband to evolve into sort of this on-demand dynamic world. In, in terms of new networks, some examples we see out there are SD-WAN. So SD-WAN services across uh, disaggregated multi-access networks is, is, is another example. And then when you look at 5G, a 5G network slicing is going to require end-to-end -end service orchestration because a network slice is going to span uh, multiple parts of the network all the way from the radio access network to the edge, to the transport, to the core, which means you have to be able to stitch together and manage that slice end-to-end -end. Um, so network slicing is an example of, of where it will be required. And then an extension of network slicing, something like network slice as a service, uh, would be, again, another future uh, opportunity or service where end-to-end -end service orchestration we needed. So those are just kind of a, a, a run-through of some of the types of services where you know, there's more sophisticated automation and orchestration capabilities needed, uh, especially as you look at kind of the world of on-demand uh, configurable networks. Yeah, it's a good um, a good overview of services too, because in the in the priority access sort of uh, domain, you know, a lot of people are doing things uh, post pandemic, or, or 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 will continue to do things post pandemic that require or, or could use, I guess, priority um, in the network, like uh, you know, health appointments uh, online and stuff like that. Um, and then on the other uh, end. I'm also, you know, looking forward to network slicing and seeing what operators do with that. What enterprise, what kind of services enterprises, um, you know, will invent and discover as that capability becomes more uh, uh, more commonplace. I guess. Um, so, what is Amdocs specifically offering um, in in the way of end-to-end -end service orchestration? So, so, we have a network and service automation platform called Amdocs uh, Neo. It has a set of capabilities that support business-driven service design. Uh, it includes a rich, rich service design and modeling environment where you can use, you know, reusable building blocks to compose again this mesh uh, of a service design, you, you know, based on uh, underlying capabilities. It has a very rich contextual cross-domain orchestration capability, a real-time and active federated inventory because you have to have a view of all the moving pieces and parts of the network and the service chains that make up these new innovative services of the future. And the last piece has got a closed loop assurance capability that is able to 
uh, process the data, interpret it, and make and you know take actions based on policies defined to assure and remediate the service. So that's got a rich set of end-to-end lifecycle management capabilities are uh, within the Amdocs Neo platform. Excellent. And uh, in the intro, I promised you would give an example of uh, where Amdocs is supporting an end-to-end service orchestration solution within an operator today. Um, please, uh, p- please make me pay off on that promise. Sure, yeah. <laughs> so a good example is a provider called SES. So SES is a a global operator of satellites. And a few years back, they wanted to extend and grow their business within enterprise services. And in 2019, they launched a new managed SD-WAN service. And by the way, this SD-WAN service, they can deliver it to, you know, it, it leverages their multi-orbit satellite infrastructure and can def- de- deliver SD-WAN services to endpoints on cruise ships or remote mining rigs. But uh, the way they deliver their solution is that it spans multiple domains. It spans uh, physical, virtual, and cloud functions. It spans satellite access and radio access networks. It spans fiber transport and core infrastructure. So in order for them to deliver this enterprise-grade SD-WAN connectivity along with additional applications, they have to be able to stitch together and orchestrate across this multi-domain you know, network and this is where sort of the Amdocs uh, service and network automation solution has enabled them to do this end-to-end orchestration across this complex network, delivering, you know, high quality bandwidth through their SD-WAN offering to, like I said, you know, mining rigs and cruise ships and more. Yeah, that's an interesting, um, uh, I- interesting example. And also, like you said, spanning not just multiple domains, but all over the globe because of it being a, you know, a satellite company anyway. So it's, it's a, a, a really unique look at some of the challenges that a, that an operator can face and how Amdocs is, uh, is, is putting it all together for them. Um, okay. Final question for, uh, uh, for the sake of time. Um, what is the urgency, you know, for, for service providers? Why do they need to be looking at uh, orchestration solutions right now? Yeah, so the end service orchestration, um, the, the necessity, the imperative really comes down to two things, maximizing the revenue potential of the new networks, because that's one dimension. And then the other dimension is uh, ensuring efficient service management and operations. Now, to realize the huge, uh, to realize the value and fully monetize the huge investment that's being made in these new networks, you know, they're looking to launch, service providers are looking to launch a whole wide range of new innovative services that are going to span multiple domains. Scaling these services and providing the right end user experiences is going to require automation that's able to support and work on top of this dynamic network. So, you know, growing and monetizing that new network is going to require end to end service orchestration. That's dimension number one. But even if some of the other service providers were able to launch these new innovative services that span multiple domains and do manual stitching and band-aid to make things work, ultimately things will break down. And and without the automation, there'll be a huge amount of costs and inefficiencies in the system. So really the realization of the value from these new dynamic networks you know, will be aided through end-to-end service orchestration, both on the revenue growth side and also managing these networks efficiently and operating them effectively. Yeah, and if we don't see automation really take hold in service provider networks as these things are, as complexity is uh, is bearing down on them and and the network uh, services themselves are sort of speeding up, um, they, they could very quickly become left behind in terms of, uh, you know, from a competitive point of view. So for the mobile networks, mm-hmm. it's a big change, right? Because as I mentioned, a yeah. single service-ready network now to this much more complex dynamic network that requires much more sophisticated automation to sit on top of that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, well, uh, uh, let's leave it there for now. Uh, we've we certainly covered a lot, and, and I do appreciate your time and insights today. Uh, Yogan Patel from Amdocs, thanks so much for uh, being with us. Thank you, Phil. 